Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. Now in this video we're going to be taking a look at creating a jQuery plugin but this time we're going to be allowing a callback function uh, for our plugin. So what do I mean first of all by a callback function? Now let's take a look at how this works. It's a simple countdown where we can specify uh, a single uh, integer and we count down from that integer to zero. When we reach zero, we then uh, give our you know indication that the function or the plugin has completed, uh, and then we can run the callback function. And in this case, the callback function is going to be an alert box. So when I refresh the page, you can see that we start counting down from five. Uh, when we reach um, zero, or when we reach you know one still displayed, but I you know I haven't gone into technicality with the plugin. We show this done uh, input field. Uh, so essentially, what we're doing here is I'm applying this to a div called countdown. We have the div here, uh, and I'm using my countdown plugin, which I've created inside plugin.js. I've got an option that I can specify from, and I'm saying from five. So we can go ahead and change this to ten if we like, uh, and it will go ahead and count down from ten, uh, ten, nine, eight, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then this is the callback function here. So when it's done, i.e., when it reaches zero, we use we sort of send this callback function or, or allow this callback function to be executed, and that just alerts done. So this could be anything. It could be something like window dot location. Um, so it equals uh, HTTP Google dot UK, for example. Uh, so we could count down from say three. Uh, you know, there's there's many useful ways that you could go ahead and use this application, and you see we're now at Google. Uh, so there's you know there's there's a variety of you know ways that you could actually take use of callback functions, uh, particularly when you are creating your um, own functions. Uh, let's just go back and refresh. Okay, so. Um, we need to figure out obviously what we're doing now if you haven't already looked at creating parameters or sending settings to plugins I recommend you look at that first because I'm not going to be going over it too much in the tutorial uh, but the main thing we're focusing on is this second option of our of our uh, plugin declaration and that is our callback function so we're going to be creating this countdown timer so if you wanted to uh, follow along and create that as well we're going to be creating it as a plugin obviously uh, and then sending this callback when we're done or when the counter reaches zero. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the code. Okay, so on the index page here, we're gonna need to create an area on our page for the countdown to be uh, placed. So the numbers that are decrementing and eventually reaching zero are placed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a div and this is gonna be called countdown. Now inside ext.js we can use our countdown to apply our plugin and our plugin wherever it's called on which selector that it's called will place the uh, countdown so this could be absolutely anything it could be a paragraph as long as it as long as you select using the plugin it will always place the um, the the numbers that are you know decrementing in that area so inside ext.js let's go ahead and outline how we might want to use our plugin before we go ahead and create it inside plugin.js uh, so the first thing I want to do is say document.ready and inside here uh, we run a function so this is just standard uh, you know sort of notation for when we start a uh, jQuery application or jQuery code now inside here I'm going to go ahead and select um, what was it called countdown so we want to select countdown and we want to apply the countdown plugin to this now at the moment I'm not going to go ahead and specify any options we'll do that as we go along and as we create our plugin but essentially now we are creating the countdown plugin uh, to this countdown selector so the te the numbers will be in here like 10 9 8 7 blah 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 uh, as I as I've shown you before we need to specify two things in here the first one is the options that we want to send uh, to the plugin the second is the callback function so we'll do that in a minute but now let's go ahead and start to actually create our plugin so if you've already dealt with creating plugins we uh, use function and sorry that needs to be in brackets so we use function and then we use a dollar sign in here 
Uh, don't worry if you're a bit confused with this. It you know it doesn't sort of really make sense, but this is the way we make uh, plugins. And then we come down with this sort of block here, if that makes sense. Now after this, we want to go ahead and write jQuery and then a line terminator. And this here is the standard notation of creating or outlining a plugin. We then need to go ahead and name our plugin. So we use dollar sign in place of jQuery. Remember, we would usually use jQuery, but now we can use dollar sign dot fn, which stands for function name or function. Uh, and then we call our function, you know, whatever we want to call it, as long as it doesn't conflict conflict with uh, an existing plugin or another functionality or another, you know, jQuery functionality. Now, now that we've said dollar dollar function countdown this is equal to a function and inside of here will go our code so here goes our code now inside of here what we want to do is we want to go ahead and actually create the countdown itself with an interval we're going to be setting an interval but inside this function here we first of all want to specify which options and also callback so options we're going to sort of condense down into a list of settings and at the moment we've only got one and that was from and a particular number uh, and then we have our callback function at the end so let's deal with this from 10 at the moment so I've specified the setting as as I call my plugin now I need to go ahead and work out how to handle it so the first thing I need is a variable called settings and this is an array of data and that array of data takes the uh, argument or parameter name and then a default value so I'm going to set the default value to 60 what I then want to do is check if a user has provided these options now this settings here is not to be confused with the option set but what we want to do is we want to go and combine them if options have been provided ie if the user has typed in here so I'm going to say if options and the block that we want to run if options are available is we want to extend settings 